is 2.4 times greater than the apparent length. If the apparent length is 100 microns, then the actual length is actually 240 microns. Therefore, in this case, we can have a rough estimation diagram. We can estimate one period, which is, if you follow the mouse outline, it is uh, 10 microns in the, the width of the bumps and 14 microns at the height of the bumps. Uh, if, you schedule, if you sketch it this way, it is 48 microns in actual length and 20 microns in apparent length, which makes it 2.4 times greater than the, uh, than the size, than the actual size. So using the Wenzel model, we are able to predict the surface roughness and surface roughness to be quite rough with an actual area of approximately 240 microns as we've shown before. So what exactly does this mean? Um, the Wenzel model proves that the theory is that there is actual surface roughness by assuming that the beetle's exoskeleton is made up of chitin. Uh, seeing that there is surface roughness and seeing that the water contact angle is 5 degrees only, it's easy to see that the water droplets are entrapped in the tiny sized bumps within the peaks of these bumps. So in order to be super hydrophilic, they must be extremely wettable, and they must have a contact angle to be close to zero degrees. And in this case, five degrees is very close to zero degrees. So it is easy to see why water would then form, would then cling on and form larger droplets. All right. So that explains the first part of how the beetle is able to have this controlling mechanism of capturing water and extracting water out of the misty fog using high winds, not being able to blown, not having the water droplets being blown away. So secondary analysis is the um, how the hydrophobic areas work. So so as, a co as I stated a while ago, the cohesive energy between the water droplets increase as the volume increases. And if they increase, um, largely the cohesive energy is greater than the adhesive energy between the liquid and solid interface. So in terms of wettability, if the cohesive energy between the liquids are weaker than the adhesive energy between the liquid and solid interface, then it is characterized wettable, and if vice versa, non-wettable. So in this case, uh, the cohesive energy is greater than the adhesive energy. So therefore, the water droplets will roll away from the super hydrophilic peaks of the bumps and enter a super hydrophobic environment. As we stated a while ago, the, the gaps between the bumps. So why is it exactly super hydrophobic? Um, scientists and scientific articles have not stated um, exactly why they why it's super hydrophobic. Uh, wax only has a water contact angle of 107 degrees, and we stated a while ago these the the gaps are wax coated. So in order to be super hydrophobic, the contact angle of water must exceed 150 degrees. Otherwise, it will still be entrapped in this area and not roll away so easily. So we need to talk about dimensions again. Um, the the gaps between the bumps are uh, examined in through a microscope, and they are stated to be slightly flattened hemispheres. They are stated to be ten microns in diameter and five microns apart. Uh, there is impurities in the gaps, and therefore causes hydrophobicity. So here's a simplified diagram of what a water droplet would look like as it rolls across the super hydrophobic areas. Because the the flattened hemispheres are more bump-like, uh, they only are in contact with one micrometer of the flattened hemispheres. This picture right here, the bottom picture, shows more of a rough diagram of what it would look like with only touching one micron of the bumps and the next bump with five microns apart. Uh, so we can use the Cassie-Baxter model to analyze the super hydrophobic properties of the surface. The Cassie-Baxter model allows us to see the magnification of the contact angle from chemical interferences and in this case it is wax. Okay, so using the Cassie-Baxter model uh, we can see that the equation is uh, cosine theta star equals f1 cosine theta 1 plus f2 cosine theta 2. Theta star is the actual contact angle between the liquid and solid interface. Theta 1 is the intrinsic contact angle of the solid-liquid interface. 
Theta 2 is the contact angle of whether, whether it is super hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So F1 is the area of fraction in contact with liquid, and F2 is the area of fraction not in contact with liquid, which is the gaps. So in this case, this part is F1, and this is F2, the fraction. So diving into the calculation, um, theta 1 is 107 degrees, theta 2 is 180 degrees. In this case, F1 is 1, 6, F2 is 5, 6. The ones are not in contact with the water. After calculating, we can see that theta star, the actual contact angle, is actually 152 degrees, making it super hydrophobic. So because it is super hydrophobic, we can see what we can easily see why the water contact angle um, causes it to roll across in the perfect, uh, nearly perfect spherical shape into the beetle's mouth parts. So because it is super hydrophobic, it is able to not be entrapped and not heed to the surface and into the beetle's mouth parts. So in conclusion, um, the beetle has naturally patterned super hydrophobic and super hydrophilic patterns and therefore the beetle can sustain a living. This self-hydration method uh, through a special mechanism and special controlling ability of water allows the beetle to thrive in this desert where water is considered to be negligible and meek. So why is it exactly important to study this? The importance is that if we learn the beetle and we mimic this, we can produce a device that can find impactful applications. Uh, biomimetics has recently been a novel part of our research. And the super hydrophilic patterns on super hydrophobic surfaces can be easily reproduced. And if they can be easily reproduced, we can find future applications in water trapping tents, building coverings, uh, open air micro channel devices, uh, controlled drug release coatings. And these all can lead to commercial products that can build devices to capture water where water is low. For example, in rural areas where um, third world countries do not have a sufficient amount of water, we can create something that can be built in a system where water trapping or water harvesting is very efficient. So this is the importance of the investigation. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in today and uh, listening to my presentation. And I hope you liked it. And thank you.